I went to Russia when I was 22. You know this story. And I robbed a train. You've never. What? Wait. You... <laughs> what? This is so good. This is, you're the one person. <laughs> what? Well, you know, you know my nickname, The Machine, right? No, Bert. Are you serious? Oh, this is awesome. Sweet. <laughs> Are you being. Okay. So, yeah. So, I want. Okay, hang on, hang on. Bert Kreischer's machine story is basically his origin story. He's told it so many times now that, apart from being a fat fuck who doesn't wear shirts, it's what he's most known for. It was recently made into a movie called, wait for it, The Machine, which takes place 23 years after the original story, and basically involves a visual retelling of the original machine story, with Bert Kreischer playing himself now and Jimmy Tatro playing the young Bert. But unfortunately for him and his financial backers, the movie was a box office bomb. In today's video, I'm going to explain why I think it bombed so badly, how the Joe Rogan universe failed on this occasion, and why. So this isn't a movie review or anything, but having said that, I want to say up front that I actually enjoyed this movie. I thought it was pretty funny. I wouldn't watch it again. It's not a masterpiece or anything. And you can tell that Bert isn't a professional actor, but they still did a half decent job. So I'm not hating on Bert by making this video. I like his energy and he seems like a fun guy to hang around with, apart from his alcoholism, cringe as fuck laugh, and his commitment to the Dunning Kruger effect. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched it 10 times. But I guess we all have our quirks. So before I give you my take on his movie's flop, I want to give those of you who maybe don't know The Machine Story a brief overview just to get you up to speed real quick. When I was 22, I got involved with the Russian Mafia. Here's how it happened. The story takes place back when he was a college student at Florida State University back in 1995. He was a real party animal. Apparently he was at college for like seven years. So one day in a Russian class that he thought was actually a Spanish class because he was obviously a massive dumbass, he heard about a chance to go abroad to Russia. And even though he was a shit student and couldn't read, write or speak Russian, he thought it'd be fun and he'd get a minor in Russian as well. So he ends up in Russia, staying with a host family that didn't understand a word of English, and for some reason, their tour guides were Russian mafia to keep them safe or whatever. So one night, Bert tries to impress them by saying something in Russian about slaying pussy, but ends up fucking it up and saying, I am the machine. They end up loving him, and he drinks with them all night. According to Bert, they did heaps of gangster shit together. He even robbed all his classmates with them on a train to Moscow. They basically thought he was funny as fuck, and he partied hard with them for the rest of the trip. So it's a pretty funny story. He's got some good mileage out of it. Some people think the machine story basically made his career, and he's been riding the wave ever since. So eventually it became a movie, which was released in May of this year. And here's how it happened according to Bert. I was partying. And they wanted to write an article about this school, Florida State, when they oh called down God. and they reached out to a bunch of people and everyone said my name. And so, <laughs> so the journalist uh, stayed with me for like a week and we just partied and had a good time. And then he wrote the article about me and it changed my life. Like Oliver Stone option, the rights to my life. What? I moved. To, yeah. Yeah. I moved to New York to start stand up and. When I was 26, I, I moved Oliver there. Stone optioned the rights to your his, life? His company, yeah. His company um, optioned the rights to this, to the article. So it's, yeah, in, in essence, it was my life. And then, and, uh, and then I moved to New York to start stand up. And then I started stand up, and Will Smith read the article. I got a development deal with him. Whoa. And, then, and yeah, and that's how I got in the business is, is this one article kind of changed my life. So that's how Bert's Machine Story became a movie, but unfortunately it was a massive box office bomb. On a production budget of $20 million, it only made $10 million at the box office, and when you include marketing, the budget was probably closer to $25 or even $30 million. and when you subtract the theatre's cut from ticket sales, which is usually around half, on a budget of $25 to $30 mil, 
the studio would have needed around 50 or 60 just to break even. So with only $10 million at the box office, yeah, that's pretty bad, right? Even if my assumptions are completely off, there's no way this movie made a profit in theaters alone. The only way that it can become profitable is when it hits VOD and streaming services, but given how far the movie is already into the red, I doubt it'll make much of a difference. It might help to cover some of the losses, but I think it's safe to say that Burt's machine movie was a flop. So I guess the question is, how can such a famous story from a well-known comedian perform so badly at the box office? And like I said at the beginning, it was actually an okay movie. I thought it was good. So I don't think you can just say it was a shit movie and that's why it didn't do well. Even though it had negative reviews and shit ratings, there are plenty of movies that have been critical failures but made heaps of money at the box office. I think the real reason why it flopped was because Sony Pictures, Legendary Entertainment who bought the rights, and Burt Kreischer overestimated the pulling power of the Joe Rogan universe. Let me explain what I mean, so just hear me out for a minute. There are a bunch of comedians who were doing well as stand-ups, but then when Joe Rogan had them on his podcast, their careers blew up. A lot of them were talented comedians anyway, so when Joe platformed them on JRE, it kind of made sense that they became so big. I'm not saying they didn't deserve it, but it's just basic maths. JRE increased their critical mass exponentially, so it stands to reason that if you're funny and you have good stories, people are going to look you up and start following you. And that's what happened with guys like Tom Segura, Andrew Schultz, Ari Shafir, Brendan Schaub, Cringe, and the list goes on. But Burt Kreischer was one of them too. He even says so himself. And then I'd tell it from time to time on like radio shows. Yes. But when I told it on Rogan, that was the game changer. Joe said on his show, and this is old school Rogan, he's like, from this day forward, he is only be referred, referred to as the machine, and you need to make him tell that on stage. And so I told it on stage for like four years. But it wasn't just Joe helping Bert's story go viral earlier on. Bert actually dropped the first teaser trailer on JRE earlier this year. Let's watch my trailer. <laughs> oh! You got a trailer out for the special? Well, no, for well, my wait, movie. No. You want to see my teaser? Wait, the, what, the, the, the machine? The, the machine, yeah. that movie that we, we're not supposed to talk about? We're just this waiting is not for your, to be this you, This is Ukraine? not your trailer. This is your teaser. This is my teaser. Let's see. Yeah. And I'm not technically allowed to show this. So what's happening? Am I in trouble? No, you won't if, be in but trouble. But if we air this? Hold on, don't, don't hit this, but hold, hold on a second. Hold on. If we air this, am I giving up some intellectual property? That is uh, not legal for me to be disseminating to millions of people. No, you're fine. I'm a producer. You own it. I'm getting sued. I no, just no, heard no, that. No. You want, I just no. saw lawyers in front of me going, these are your options. No, I, I sent it. I I got this teaser a while back. Why don't you and do I, this on your fucking podcast? Take that was a good side. fucking... Oh, I thought maybe get the views. <laughs> just as a side note, I think it's pretty funny how when Joe asked Bert why he didn't just drop the teaser trailer on his own podcast... Bert blurted out that it's for the views. Joe's friends using him for exposure is a whole other story for a different video, but Bert made it so obvious there, and you could tell Joe is kind of onto him. While I'm on this tangent, Brian Simpson was pretty shameless the other day at the beginning of episode 2006, literally 17 seconds into a three hour plus podcast. He plugs his upcoming shows and his own podcast before getting into any meaningful discussion. Now, I'm a Brian Simpson fan. I think he's funny as fuck, but this was pretty shameless. All day. What's up? Hell yeah. What's up, Joe? Good to see you, brother. Glad to be back. Can I plug my dates real yeah. quick before I forget? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be in uh, Denver at Comedy Works on July 13th through the 15th and uh, Levity Live in West Nyack. New York on July 20th to the 22nd. Get those tickets on B, uh, BrianSimpsonComedy.com. Nice. Listen to the podcast, BS with Brian Simpson. It's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, It's very good. Yeah. You enjoy doing it? I love it, man. I love it. Okay, okay. Sorry, guys. I digress. I'll have to do a whole video on Joe's mates using him for exposure. But anyway, you might be asking yourself right now, well, if JRE has so much pulling power 
and they plugged it like no tomorrow across their comedy podcast network, how come it bombed so hard at the box office? I think the answer is most Burt Kreischer fans already know the story. He told it a million times and it's been going around for years. And for those who don't really know Burt that well, they might have seen some of his stand-up and think he's pretty funny, but they don't tune into his podcasts or anything. Those people probably just don't give a fuck. And unfortunately, I think that's probably most people. They might know who Burt Kreischer is from so much exposure across the podcast universe, but they're not prepared to go and pay for a ticket to a movie that's based on some random story from years ago. Don't get me wrong, it's a funny story and the movie was pretty funny too, but I'm not going to lie, it's kind of weird to make a movie based off one random stand-up bit from however many years ago, even if the original video has over 50 million views on YouTube. Even Bert himself admitted that it's a pretty random story that doesn't have a punchline. And so I told her on stage for like four years, and then it got good. <laughs> it bombed so bad. No, hold on it a second. Bombed. Are you serious? So I'm talking a 13 minute story. If I was tight, it was a 15 minute story, 20 yeah. minute story at times to silence crickets. I didn't have an end to the story. What? Hold on a second. So the f first you said I could tell it to you. Yes. Like this. Yes. Yes. Great. Yes. But in front of an audience of comedy club fans. Yes. It would just. Because it's a long, it's a long story. story, and they're like sitting there going, "How long? How long is this going to take?" They were used to jokes at that time. Yeah, podcasting changed everything. People wanted to hear stories, and I think I got better at telling stories. And then when I got it good, uh, then I recorded it, and I, I once again, I didn't think anyone was going to ever hear it. I posted it on this weird time on the internet, like in between Christmas and New Year's Eve, where everyone was home. Yes, and uh, and it went viral and changed my life. At the end of the day, I think Bert and his team overestimated the pulling power of his story, and it just goes to show that not everything Joe Rogan supports or touches turns to gold. There's a limit to what people are willing to do to have a laugh, and turning Bert's origin story into a movie was probably a step too far. I don't think it'll damage him too much though, it's probably safe to say his career as a movie star is over for now. He pulled out all the stops to promote this movie and it didn't work. But he still has his stand-up career and his podcasts, which is what he should stick to. I guess I'll be telling it at my funeral. <laughs> well, I mean, a it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna say, here lies the machine. Let's yeah. be honest, man. Oh, it's, oh, it's, I'm like, I, I have milked this cow <laughs> like a closeted dairy farmer from the 1930s. I'm taking my time with it. Like, I, I, I hoof, to, hoof to snout, I have milked this cow. Anyway, that's my take on why the machine bombed at the box office. Let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments or if you have a different take. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button and become a subscriber so you can keep up to date with all my latest uploads. I'll chat to you guys soon. See you in the next one. <laughs> all you need is one good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Kinda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at t -shirt.